How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today's job we have a 140M grader in for a fair bit of repair. So this is probably going to be a two-part series. What graders are commonly used for? They are used for grading a flat level surface so you could then build roads, infrastructure, sheds. They're not really a bulk earth moving machine although they do have a set of rippers on the back of them which are used for loosening up the surface so it can then be graded into shape. They are mainly used for trimming down surfaces nice and flat so you can then put a road on it or something like that. They they are quite smart in what they can do, the way they can articulate their blade and move it around. They can even flip it right out the side to cut a batter. This machine is fitted with Trimble GPS, so it allows the operator to work to within really fine tolerances while he's grading a surface. This machine is an 08 model, so 2008 it was built. It is in very good condition for its age, but they do wear out like everything else. The work we're going to be doing to it is pretty well general wear and tear, so this is something you will have to do to a grader at some time during its life. With all the work we need to do we're going to start at the bottom and then we're going to work our way to the top so what i'm going to start with first is the blade skin there is no blade skin on it at the moment they don't come with a skin on them so this blade is extremely worn out this has holes in it already so we do need to cut a new skin and fit it onto the blade to protect it from any further wear after we finish the blade skin, we're then going to move up to the ball mounts on the back of the A-frame where the two blade lift cylinders attach to. And we're going to cut them off and change them out for new ones. The first thing I need to do, I need to articulate the blade out the side of the machine so it's a lot easier to work on. So this is the one reason why I love working on graders when I'm doing a blade skin because you can articulate that blade to pretty much wherever you want it to make it really easy to work on. So because we've just done a reskin on an 815 compactor blade, we're not going to get too far into the details of what we need to do. So we're just going to get this one done as quickly as possible. First thing I need to do in order to get our new skin on the blade is remove the cutting edge bolts, get the cutting edges out of the way, then I can cut the new blade skin to size. Thanks to all of my viewers that have been very concerned about my hearing, that I'm not wearing hearing protection. Well, I actually am, you just might not see them. So I do use earplugs. Anytime I'm doing something noisy, rattle guns, needle guns, stuff like that, grinding, I do wear hearing protection, I do wear eye protection. So thank you everyone who's concerned, but I got it covered. That's why they might be hard to spot. Righto, so that went really smoothly. Every bolt came undone. None of them gave us any trouble at all. The bolts look quite new. I'm gonna assume those cutting edges are probably only about a month old. There is also a crack on one of the side edges, the side cutters. I'd say he's fully aware of that. I will note it when I give him a call later on and see what he wants to do about that. But I'm gonna assume he's just gonna run that one again. So now that we've got the edges off, you can actually see how much wear there is in the blade. I do have the original template I took from the same sort of era machine and its blade profile is still different to this one even though they were both made in Brazil. And that is because this blade has got a lot of wear on it and you can see here in the corner how much wear it's actually suffered.
Nom, 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 nom. No more, George. All gone. Me? What about me? Oh, oh what a good boy.
Righto guys, so the wind out here has picked up severely, so I'm having nothing but issues trying to weld this out here. We'll get this in the shed and keep going. So now that the cutting edges have been refitted back to the blade, I am going to do some hard facing just behind the cutting edge just to protect that weld. Generally I would use Studi 965G but there is none available so I'm going to use the next best thing which is a Brazer Cord 700 hard facing rods. Righto, so we've completed all the welding on the blade. What I need to do now is get this back out into the outside welding area. I do have to remove the trunnions and I do have to do that via gouging, so I won't be doing that in the workshop. We're gonna get it back outside and get back into it. Stay. <laughs> hey, hey. 
Okay, so what we need to do now, we need to replace the four trunnion ball mounts. So one of them is bolted in, the other three are welded onto the A-frame of the grater. So the two blade lift cylinders, they lift and lower the A-frame, which is attached to the blade. You then have your centre shift cylinder, which can then offset the A-frame left or right of the machine, depending on what they're trying to do. The trunnion balls are mounted to the ends of the cylinders via basically a two-part cap, which is a ball socket. They are quite common to wear out. You do have shims you can remove in order to tie them up but over time they are going to wear out and they end up egg shaped. Simply machining the bottom off the caps is not the solution. You'll end up with binding and then they end up breaking off the ends of the blade lift rods. So in order to remove those you need to undo the two bolts then we can lift the blade cylinders up out of the road. Oh, that was loose as... So now we've got the blade lift cylinders up out of the way, you can really see how much wear is on those trunnion balls. So there is a cup shim that goes around either side of the ball, and that is basically a sacrificial piece of material so you don't wreck the ends of the cylinder rods or the caps themselves. What we need to do now, we need to get the centre shift cylinder undone and out of the way, and then we can get on to gouging off the, the ball trunnions. So to get the trunnion balls off, we are going to be using air arc gouging. With air arc, it goes everywhere. The sparks go all over the joint. So try and cover up the glass on the machines because there's about $4,000 worth of glass up there I don't want to have to replace because I've damaged it with sparks. I am going to do my best to avoid damaging the paintwork and that does mean doing a little bit of extra work. Rather than try and gouge the weld all the way around the trunnion ball, that will throw sparks everywhere. So I'm just going to come in from the top and I'm just going to keep going down in layers until the trunnion ball is then removed. Then I can go back and clean up everything that I've left behind. This will eliminate sparks flying all over the joint and me getting burnt and burning the machine.
Now that I've got those welded, I'm just going to go through and just take the tops down off the welds and remove any weld spatter. I'll be using a standard angle grinder for that. For the hard to reach places, I have a long series 4 inch grinder, which is really good for getting into some of those really tight spots. And then after that, I'll follow up with a needle gun that'll just re-texturize the weld joint and offer a little bit of stress relief. Busy, George.
Righto guys, so we've got our new trunnion balls fitted. Given them a coat of paint, they've come up really good. So that is all the hot works completed on the grater, but we're not finished yet. What I need to do next, I need to remove the blade lift cylinders and the steering cylinders because they need to be stripped and resealed. But you'll have to stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. Gonna sit on the blade? Probably stand. Does, is that comfortable? You gotta lean, I know. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> right. Yeah. <clears throat> Ready? Yep. Right, wait, where'd you start that? Right, I guys, so I've just. Oh, wait, what am I saying? Wait, how am I starting that? <laughs> we do have. Oh, fuck, I lost it. Right, I say the. Oh, fuck, I really lost it. You know why? You got the wrong undies on for the wrong day. I do. Oh, no, that's what it is. Wait, don't show on my hairy stomach. <laughs> fucking pasty white boy. Put some of that hair on your head. <laughs> if you put all the hair that is on my body on my head, I would have the most luscious, wealthy head of hair. <laughs> There'd be weird curly bits from other parts of the body, but it'd be nice hair. What's uh, burning? Oh, the. So that is all the hot works. Oh, fuck me, that's doing my head. Just wait for the gust to finish. Keep going, fucking dare you. Keep fucking going. That looks like shit. Then I can cut the new blade skin to size. Just in time. <laughs> right. Majestic bin chicken. <laughs> Go give him the flogging. Right, let's see how far up my arm I can get you. What's this? Come on. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you nuisance birds must leave. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that he might have.